What's up internet, Kevin here with TLD. Now for those of you who've been watching my videos know that I've recently done some sort of reactions and thoughts on what we saw at E3 for both the Xbox One and PS4. But I thought it would also be a great idea to do a direct comparison of both systems and what they have to offer, especially considering some recent announcements that have changed things up a lot for Microsoft. So to begin with, the big news for Microsoft is that they are officially repealing all the major DRM changes they made to the Xbox One, except for requiring the Kinect to be plugged in. What this means is that games will no longer have individual IDs, so you can resell them as you wish, and you'll no longer have to check in every 24 hours to play games offline. You just have to connect to the internet once when you first set up the system. Now of course this does mean that you now do have to have discs in the actual Xbox One to play them, so anything you buy physically you do have to keep the disc to do a disc check. It's not like what they were doing before where you could just switch between everything you own digitally right away. Now of course this doesn't stop individual publishers from deciding to put their own restrictions on their own games, but it does mean that neither system will be officially supporting that and having it on their entire catalog. So as far as distribution goes, it's working just like it is now. If you buy a game physically, it's yours to use to either lend to a friend, trade into a story want to or sell it online, or if you buy it digitally, it'll be restricted to just your account alone. It's also worth noting that both systems will not be using region locking this time around, so that does mean that no matter where you buy a game from, what country you get it from, it will work on your system. As far as games go, there are a number of multi-platform titles announced for both systems for major third-party companies, but there are a number of exclusives available to each side, with Microsoft having just a few more for the Xbox One, though some of those will be available on PC as well. For the Xbox One, we currently know of Dead Rising 3, Rise Son of Rome, Forza 5, Killer Instinct, a new Halo game, Quantum Break, Sunset Overdrive from Insomniac Games, and two titles that will also be available on the PC, Titanfall and Project Spark. Sony, on the other hand, has Killzone Shadowfall, Infamous Second Son, Knack, Drive Club, and The Order 1886. Though it is also worth noting that PS4 will be showing a lot more support for indie titles, a number of which will be exclusive to the system as far as consoles go, including Transistor and The Witness. Now, of course, any of these exclusives that are third-party titles could eventually be released on the other systems as timed exclusives. One example that we do know of is that Respawn Entertainment, the team behind Titanfall, has not officially ruled out doing a PS4 version eventually. Now, while neither system will be backwards compatible at launch, the PS4 will be offering Gaikai, which will allow you to emulate games from the PS1 through PS3 digitally on the system, though that does mean that anything you own physically will still have to be kept with the system you had it for. Hardware-wise, both systems will have a 500GB hard drive, a Blu-ray drive, and HDMI out for video. The Xbox One will have three USB 3.0 ports, with the PS4 only having two, and both of them will have ports for the respective camera accessories, the PlayStation Eye camera and the Xbox Kinect, although only the Xbox One will come pre-bundled with the Kinect. Brute performance wise, the systems are fairly similar with the PS4 having a slight edge, and while both systems have eight gigs of RAM, the Xbox One will be dedicating three of those gigs towards operating media and OS services, like being able to do things like quickly switching between movies and gaming, or Skyping on the side. Now for this generation, both systems will be requiring some kind of paid for memory membership in order to play multiplayer games online, using their current ones which are the Xbox Live Gold and PlayStation Plus services. Both of these services will continue to have the same benefits they currently do, as well as some new ones, with Xbox Live Gold being required to use media services, but also now giving you two free games every month, whereas PlayStation Plus will still be offering a rotating catalog of free games every month for the PS3, PS Vita, and now the PS4, as well as discounts on the PSN store. Now what initially looked like a big win for the PS4 is looking to be a much more even playing field thanks to Microsoft relenting on their unpopular DRM decision for the Xbox One. We're seeing a lot more exclusives on both sides right at or soon after launch than usual, and both systems are now requiring you to pay to play games online. Now the PS4 does have a good edge with its price point being $399.99, a whole hundred bucks cheaper than the Xbox One, though the Xbox One does come with the Kinect right away, which depending on who you are is either a good thing, an unnecessary thing, or just plain creepy. All this together points towards the most important deciding factor for most people will be which console exclusives really appeal to them, or just long-term fanboyism in which you just buy the system that is related to the one you already have. Now Microsoft's recent PR nightmares have driven a lot of fans away, though many are coming back now that they've issued an apology and have repealed the DRM changes, but some are just not willing to forgive them just yet and may still wait before they get that console. Personally, I'm really curious how this holiday season is going to end up. With a number of great exclusive titles on both sides and different media services, I'm interested to see which one ends up winning, whether PS4 maintains the current lead it has, or if the Xbox One makes a big comeback. Well that was just a comparison of what we know about both systems after a number of huge announcements from both sides. If you have yet to do so, make sure to check out some of my older videos where I do a more in-depth analysis of both PS4 and Xbox One, as well as what Nintendo's going to do this year to try and compete with both of them. As always guys, thank you so much for watching our videos. If you have yet to, make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our latest news, unboxings, and reviews. And if you enjoyed this vid, make sure to hit the like button as it is the easiest way to help the channel, and I always appreciate it. Till next time, I'm Kevin for TLD, thanks for watching.